clean so I think I may have just gone live with my dance I think by you did. mistake. Hold on. How does that work? I think it's just a really bad delay. Oh, okay. Well, I think <laughs> I think we're live now. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all very well. We're sitting here in Johannesburg, where the temperature is well. It's been a relatively mild winter. We mustn't complain too much, although those of us who are inclined to complaining will still complain because it's not summer. We hope that you're very well wherever you happen to be on planet Earth. I was mercifully out of Johannesburg for the last week or so at the Jumaya private game reserve where I saw many leopards uh, through no skill of my own, just pure blind luck and the skill of others. Uh, but it was very wonderful to see six different leopards in six days. And new days. ones for you, then. And new ones for me, including the Tavangumi, the Totas Pan male, and one other called Nkanyeni's daughter, whose name is Watika. Three new ones, including my old favourite, Tingana, who killed a civet, which wasn't very nice of him. In fact, I don't know if he killed it. He was certainly eating it, but it's profound stink indicated that it had been deceased for some time. And the other leopard we saw was another great favourite, of course, Clalumba. Oh, I didn't know you saw her. Yes, she was oh, the first nice. one we saw. And then we saw Mulwati as well for three and a half seconds. He it's must good. go somewhere else. Anyway, that's what I've been doing. And tonight's episode, of course, is our final episode at Wildlife Act. And there's going to be a short hiatus uh, before we produce our next video because, well, we don't really have anything to edit together just yet. Um, we, we did a trip to the Kruger, but we haven't looked at our... It was one morning. Mm -hmm. We haven't looked at our footage yet. If it's I'll not, see if I can do something. Yeah. don't know. My dear wife will try and see if she can do something with it. Are there any questions? Yes, yes. yes. Cheryl um, asks, how does conservation impact the ocean? Oh. what happens on land. Cheryl, um, I think world. for conservation everybody needs to look at the environment as a whole, at the, as the, at the planet as a whole. So conservation applies to oceans as well as to land. It implies massively to oceans at the moment. Our oceans are crucial for food security. They are crucial for carbon sequestration. They are crucial to our climate. And so the more gunk we throw into them the less they can help us as a species and all the other species to survive so ocean conservation is just as important as land conservation i don't think one is more important than the other and neither can survive you know the smallest change in an ecosystem can have profound butterfly effects uh, on so many other things well said Thank and you wildlife so much. act they do do turtles and seashells and i think other yes. marine life but if that was an interest to anyone wanting yeah. to do conservation work, but in the ocean, Seychelles. I mean, the Seychelles is probably quite a nice place to spend some time. Sure. Um, Anna Marie asks, um, what James considers to be the one of the biggest threats to wildlife on our planet? Oh, Anna Marie, I think that's, that's quite an easy answer um, for me right now. The greatest threat to conservation on our planet right now is the... Well, it's actually not that easy to answer. The greatest threat to our planet is our burgeoning population. The human population is just, you know, growing and growing and growing. And what I need to say about this is important because I think a lot of the time the Western world and the richer parts of the developing world um, like, you know, people who live in Johannesburg, for example, look at rural areas and poor areas and say, well, you know, why are people having so many kids? Population growth and seems to be largely a function of poverty. As soon as people get out of poverty and become educated, um, they stop having so many children. So that's a, a massive thing to bear in mind. 
and I think that there's a huge tendency around the place to point fingers at uh, burgeoning African populations in rural areas because populations are growing in rural areas but uh, it's a function of poverty it's not a function of um, people in rural areas throughout the world just having more children for the sake of it it's it's a function of poverty and it happens in developed nations as well the poorer people are the more likely they are to have more children so that's the one thing the second thing to say that in Africa specifically the greatest challenge we face is the nexus between conservation areas protected areas buffer zones and people as those populations in rural areas grow so the chances of human wildlife conflict escalate and so the value that rural people see in wildlife goes down and again that's not an, an indictment on the people in those rural areas as I've I'm writing an article now on, on elephants and you know human beings have been killing wildlife and still do kill wildlife uh, throughout the world whenever it creates inconvenience or whenever it creates a threat to livelihood or to family and this goes for Europe, the United States, South America, Asia, it doesn't matter. Think of a spider that arrives in your home. <clears throat> a lot of people, most people, will not think twice about killing it and throwing it out. A snake, killing it and throwing it out. Because we don't perceive it as nature, but that's just a human thing. It's an animal thing. If something is a potential threat, you're going to get rid of it. So, in rural areas, where an elephant is potentially going to flatten a crop or potentially kill a family member and you know in flattening a field it can wipe out the family's food for the year that problem has got to be solved i don't know how to solve it there are a lot of very good people working on solving it a lot of rural people who love wildlife are trying to mitigate the effects of human wildlife conflict but that's a massive massive part and the greatest challenge that we face in African conservations burgeoning human populations and this nexus between people and protected areas and we have to find a way that for rural people on the outskirts of protected areas to feel safe and to feel ideally that they can benefit from that wildlife that's a shortish answer to a very good question mm -hmm. and one that we should discuss all the time. The other, may I say something? Go for it. Um, the other interesting thing to say about this is that, you know, I use lions as an example. Lions used to be the most widely spread mammal in the world. So just think about that. Lions used to be the most widely spread mammal in the world. So they extended throughout Europe, throughout Asia. African lion obviously never went into the United, the New World, I don't think. Anyway, so now, of course, lions only occur in Africa and a very small population in the Gia Forest in India. Now, I think a lot of people look at Africa and think, well, you know, why are Africans not looking after their wildlife? These are, you know, it's a world, it's a world asset and people want to get involved in African conservation without understanding that and there's a fairly judgmental uh, mindset I think a lot of the time without understanding that the reason that we're so desperately trying to conserve African wildlife is that we've wiped it out everywhere else and so with you know some exceptions like the Indian subcontinent and you know parts of wilderness in in the Arctic where you know it's just not very nice to live so it's important that we understand where we're all coming from and that we all play our part and understand that yes we must protect African wildlife but we must do so in a manner that is cognizant of the challenges that we face on this continent from a human perspective thank you so much well done Lady Macbeth says on that she says there is a deal there is a great deal of misunderstanding about wildlife in rural communities, especially in the West. Yeah, Lady Macbeth, I think is a, there is a massive uh, 
misunderstanding of wildlife and communities. I don't think it's only in the West. I think it's everywhere where there aren't communities. Uh, you know, if you come to a city in Johannesburg where people are not aware when they just they either don't go to natural places or they go into the Kruger National Park, they fly in or drive in for a couple of days and come out. They're going there to see animals. They don't, they're not going there necessarily to see or investigate conservation. So it's not only in the West, it's anywhere where people are not or have not spent time on the ground, on the borders of these parks, spoken to people and understood the challenges that they face. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, back to Wildlife yes. Act, Atlanta Jewels. What is your recommendation for length of stay at Wildlife Act to get a true to get a true experience and also be helpful to the staff? Don't they have a minimum stay of two weeks? Two weeks. We stayed one week yeah. because well, that was COVID. COVID, yeah. And yeah. actually, I mean, it, it would have been amazing to do yeah. two. I mean, we just missed out on them rescuing a vulture. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I mean, we saw a lot. Mm. in a week but I think two weeks yeah. just so you have to stay for two weeks Serena who was with us who was incredible yeah, she, she was there for six weeks six I think. weeks yeah. yeah and she went to every um, camp every with camp. wildlife act and so she had a lot of experience from coloring lions helping with the vulture the beep, ju- beeping beep beeping she did all sorts of yeah, stuff I think yeah. she had a great veterinary time. interventions yeah. yeah so two weeks is the minimum that you can go and yeah you can stay longer yeah just tell you know the thing about it is if you you have to learn if you're going to volunteer and be useful which you are at wildlife act it's not like some of these slightly less uh, shall we say scrupulous organizations where volunteering means you're actually a tourist um you know you're paying to go you're a tourist and you're not really making a massive con- conservation uh, contribution at Wildlife Act, they teach you to do stuff, and it takes a couple of days to teach you to do some of the things that you need to do. And, you know, it doesn't make sense to go in for three days, do three hours of work, and then leave. So, you know, it's three days of, I'm just saying plus minus, of training and learning what to do, and then you can make a proper con- contribution. Yeah. Um, Brandon said, how is your fine drink in your hand? Mm. Brandon, this is a wonderful drink. It is the Rhino Whiskey. Um, that I drank uh, during our concert, hey? Was it a concert yes, we did? the Scottish one. The Scottish concert. It's very delicious. It's nice and light. It doesn't... Uh, it's not sort of a... I, w- I mean, you can drink whiskey any time, of course. But it's not a heavy, peaty whiskey. It's a nice, fruity whiskey. All or some proceeds go towards rhino conservation. It's called rhino whiskey. And I think you can get it all over the world, actually. Cheers. I'm drinking Badger and Mountain. And I've only got two bottles left and then and then, and then lockdown. Lockdown and no more booze. Um on Christine, is there a surcharge that visitors to parks and private safaris must pay to help support villagers and farmers? Um on Christine, there is a conservation levy that most places place uh, or gates charge, yeah. So, I mean, percentages of your stay will go towards community development in some way, one way or another. Sometimes it's to anti-poaching, sometimes it's to the reserve. I mean, of course, the greatest contribution that ecotourism makes to local people is through employment. So if you go to a place like uh, Londolozi, for example, I only mention them because I, I work there and I know vaguely how it works. There are about 300 people employed at Londolozi. Each of them supports between 7 and 10 people on their salaries. So Londolozi as a business supports 3,000 people plus minus. That's a massive contribution. And, you know, yes, they do other community development stuff, but their biggest contribution and the biggest contribution that a tourist makes in coming to a place like that is to keep that economy going. Trina asks, so very interested in volunteering. I may have missed the info to get in touch. Could you put the info for us? It is, if you look down, 
in the description of the YouTube, you can click on volunteer or you can have a look at their website. You can do online courses. So it's all there if you just click that link in the description yeah. on YouTube. So that's for Wildlife Act. Yeah, wildlife I mean, there are a lot yeah. of places you can volunteer. Wildlife Act has a great reputation. They do a lot of good work. Yeah. And I mean, Jamie, who was our monitor, they're mm. such great people. Yeah, Jamie it's was great. Serena, shout out who to was Jamie. A, shout out to Jamie. Serena, who was the other volunteer there, was fantastic. A lot more competent than I think either of us were. Yeah, she was better. She so was you better. see her holding the telemetry a lot more yeah. because she was just better. Yeah, she was very good at beep beeping. We weren't. Um, I'm trying to look for the questions. Any I? further questions? Do you see yourself as Indiana Jones or more as a Leo in Blood Diamonds, Brandon? Brandon, I don't see myself as Indiana he Jones. He sees himself as Jason Statham. Or as Leo in Blood Diamond. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> Fast and the Furious. <laughs> no, I don't see myself in um, Fast and the Furious. RBA, yes, sorry, just to change the subject slightly, we are back in lockdown uh, until the 11th of July, which is in... Eight days, nine days, uh, we're in lockdown. Not level five, so we're in level four lockdown, which means we can't <clears throat> travel. We're not supposed to travel for leisure outside of this Gauteng, which is the uh, sort of economic hub of South Africa. And we can't buy any booze and we can't go to restaurants. And I think pub, some public gatherings are limited. No weddings. No weddings, mm -hmm. no funerals. Yeah. Which is, yeah, sad. Um, I'm going up, sorry, sorry, sorry. Lots of people talking about you being on Wild Earth. Oh, I must say, it was the, uh, we had quite an interesting, uh, for those of you who didn't see it, it was probably most of you, but we, I was at Juma and we were in a Tlalamba sighting and I had two wonderful experiences in three. The first, of course, was seeing Tlalamba, who, for those of you who don't know, is a leopardess who we watched from this big. She's now almost, she's almost four. She'll be, is that right? She'll be four in November, or three in November. 2018. Somebody's. 2018. Was it 18? I've lost touch. Okay, so Sorry. somebody will tell us. So, um, I think it's three in November. She'll be three in November. And um, then the second great thing was to see Herbert. Who was driving? It was from, his birthday yesterday. And it was Herbie's birthday yesterday, and he was driving out of Jackie's safari camp, and it was very funny because I had warned my guests and I said, you know, there's there's Herbert, and they were quite keen to meet him, and his guests, of course, had no idea who I was, and we stopped next to the car and we had a fat chat, and his guests just looked very confused, but we were so pleased to see each other that we really didn't mind, and the leopard nearly disappeared, and the third thing. It was wonderful about that sighting was that as we were sitting there, uh, the wild earth vehicle came up and the camera turned upon me, my visage, and I was overwhelmed with a sense of joy. My ego was re-injected with the love and wonder for the camera and, of course, to talking to everybody who was on that live safari. So that was three wonderful things that happened to me in one sighting. Thank you so much. You love that, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, Jenna Roberts, do you only use one camera body? Jenna, I do only use one camera body and the only reason I only use one camera body is that I can't afford another camera body. So yes, I only use the one A7 III. Now when I go on safari, I've got a 200-600 on the end of it. I carry the other lenses, the shorter lenses, uh, and then, you know, I'll stop. If we stop and we do a um uh, i don't know drink stop or something like that i'll put a short lens on and take some pictures of the people um you know kruger wise unlike where you are down in the eastern cape there's not a lot of opportunity for great wide vista shots and i always thought when i went to the mara i thought i'm going to need a hugely long lens much longer than i'd need in the kruger and i actually found it to be the other way around because the kruger is full of sticks as I have mentioned many times, there are sticks everywhere. And that means that you don't get great wide shots very often. In fact, very seldom. And great shots out of the 
certainly in my experience in the Kruger, come from real close-ups. Unless you're in a place like Pafuri, where you can get up on some big corpies and, you know, get a proper vista, it's close-up stuff. Um, you can get closer to animals and you can get really close in. Otherwise, you've got sticks in the way of just about every shot. The Mara, or a place like that, or uh, I know that you do a lot of stuff in Mountain, Mountain Zebra National Park. You know, there's a lot of great vista and you can get a zebra standing with an amazing view behind it and then you know it's nice to have a wide lens but I've never found in Kruger that I wanted to change lens on a game drive I definitely did find that in the Mara I found that I, I wanted to have two bodies one with a short lens and one with a longer one nice question thank you for that we are out of time but a quick oh. question from Emma yes. when will you be singing again Oh, Emma, um, I'm not sure. I'm working on a Mark Knopfler slash Dire Straits program. I've got about three songs in. Need another two. Could and I hurry? then we'll have one. This yes. month? I'm trying. My wife, you know, she complained about my practicing the other day. If you can no, I didn't. You did. You said, please shut the door. Okay, it's time to see in the stream. Right. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again when we see you, I suppose. And don't forget to refresh. I never complained about you playing guitar. <laughs>